Welcome to the Builders and Defenders database. This is a quick guide for exploring the website. The database is a collaborative project which collects the names and biographical information of a Black Civil War era population in Nashville, Tennessee, connected to the UNESCO site of memory, Fort Negley. The data focuses on the builders, nearly 5,000 enslaved and free Black people who built the fortification and related infrastructure in difficult circumstances in 1862, and the defenders, over 13,000 members of the United States Colored Troops who defended it during the 1864 Battle of Nashville. The remaining entries in the database are about the people who were related to or mentioned alongside this population in the primary source documents and therefore played a role in shaping Black Nashville's Civil War era population. On this website, you can explore many different features to the database project. Here, you can learn more about the history of the project and the team behind it. And here, you can explore the database by making searches for people and primary source documents, as well as exploring an interactive mapping tool. This tab tells you about the sources comprising the database and where you can learn more about them. Under this page, you can learn more about the educational resources the database offers to public school teachers, such as lesson plans and the state standards these lesson plans meet. These lesson plans were developed by local school teachers and public educators. And here, you can learn more about the Fort Negley Descendants Project and hear stories about the descendants who have learned about their connections to the builders and defenders and their important genealogical work. To explore the database, let's start with the sources that make up the research behind it. Under the Sources tab, you will see a list of all of the sources the team has researched and incorporated into the database, as well as details about our data cleaning and standardization practices. Take time to explore the sources to learn more about them and where you can find out more information and citation. For example, let's take a look at the Fort Negley Labor Roles page. This page explains what the labor role sources are, who we worked with to research them, and how we imported data from them into the database. You will also find suggestions for how to search in these documents on the database, as well as citations. To explore the database, just click Browse Content. Once you do, you will be taken to the database search page. There are a few tabs on this page to help you with your database searches. Simply click on these options to learn more about exploring the people in the database, browsing documents, and how to cite. Let's do a couple of searches together to see how the database works. First, let's search for a person. Let's say that I want to search for a person with the last name Smith. I will type in that name into the surname or last name bar and click search. After it loads, the database will show all results for people with the last name Smith. You can then browse through the results. To explore the details of the results, simply click on a person's name. Why don't we look at this entry for Albert Smith? To the right, the page will display details about this person. Information in the Details tab displayed here include demographic information, any connections they may have, and any notes about them from the sources. To the right, you can browse their relationships, if they have any in the database. For example, Albert Smith has two relationships. 
one to his mother, Martha McGavick, and one to his enslaver, W.H. Smith. To the right, you can see the primary source references that this person appears on in the database. For example, Albert Smith appears on documents such as the Fort Negley labor rolls, the George Burroughs Army Corps of Engineers correspondence collections, and various other labor documents. Some documents in the database have photos available of them to see. They will have this icon of a camera. To see the image of the primary source, simply click on the camera and it will load the image. You can stretch the image box to make it larger. So let's look for Albert Smith in this document. Here, we can read the last name Smith and Albert and find him in the document. Lastly, you can click on events to see if the person has any events assigned to them. Albert Smith has a participation event at Port Negley and a death event there as well. As you create your own people searches in the database, you can search by full first and last names, just the first or last name, and even partial names. To search on partial names, enter a partial name in the first name or last name field and select contains or starts with in the search type box to expand the search. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's say I want to find all of the last names that start with the letter S. I typed the letter S into the surname bar and changed the search type to starts with. Once I complete my search, it will load all of the last names that start with the letter S in the database. Another interesting feature of the database is that you can click Save to Excel here to download the results of your search query to an Excel spreadsheet. In addition to searching for people, you can also search by documents, entities, and shared events. For searching through primary source documents, click on the Documents tab. This will show you a list of all documents in the database. Some are held within organizational hierarchies, so make sure to expand all of the entries to get a full list of the documents. For example, Military has many additional sources. Click Military and the subsequent documents to expand the full list. Let's go ahead and do a search from these documents. Let's say we want to find someone who belonged to the 12th Regiment in the USCT. Let's expand the USCT document tab and then click on the USCT 12th Regiment summary service cards. Here, you can go through the various microfilm reels to see the people attached to these documents on the detail window to the right. If you click on people to the right window, it will show you a list of all of the people on each specific document. If you click on the blue symbol next to people's names, it will show you their people details. The 12th Regiment service cards have some of the richest notes in the database and you can really spend a lot of time exploring the history of these individuals.
some documents even have transcriptions available for them. One of the collections that we have transcriptions for are the documents of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. If you click on one of the selections for these documents and drill down to the specific pages, you will be able to see some of the transcriptions. Simply go to the right of the document detail page and click transcription. Here you will see a transcription of these documents. Next, let's look at entity searching. Entities are simply different types of groups, institutions, or other collections that people may have been connected to, such as churches, banks, plantations, railroads, and military units or forts. Here you can explore these various entities from the database and see a list of people linked to them if there are any. Let's look at the Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company. This was an index to deposit ledgers to the Freedmen's Savings and Trust Company branches at Memphis and Nashville. Established in Washington in 1865, the company served as a banking institution for the benefit of emancipated, formerly enslaved people. Indexes are arranged alphabetically and include the depositors' names, amounts, and account numbers. If you click on the connections, you can see the full list of people with connections to this bank as depositors and clients. Again, remember that you can click on the blue symbol next to their name to see details about this person. Finally, let's look at the shared events search function. Here, you can explore people who participated in large shared events together, like the construction projects of military forts or the Battle of Nashville. Let's look at who is connected to the Nashville and Northwestern Railroad construction. Click on the coincident events and it will load a list of people with shared participation here. If you would like to cite the database website, you can click on this How to Cite tab, which will bring you a list of different formats to cite with, including APA, MLA, and Chicago. If you would like to cite one of the specific primary sources from the database, go to the Documents tab, click on one of the sources, such as the ledgers of W. Cornelius Undertaker, and go to the summary page to the right. At the bottom, there will be various types of citations for these records. If you would like to copy the citation onto your clipboard, click the blue symbol next to the citation and it will copy it to your clipboard. Let's look at another interactive search tool in the database, the map. Go to the Explore the Database tab and click on Interactive Mapping. On this page, you can find a discussion about what mapping can tell us about the history of Fort Negley and the sources in our database. There is also a quick How to Use the Map summary under this tab. Once you scroll down on this page, you will see the interactive map. To use the map, simply select a category on the left to see a list of available topics. Let's start with what happened where. Click a topic, for example, births, to see where they occurred. You can then click points on the map to get a listing of people connected to these locations. Explore the listing to see details about these people.
We can also click where are people from to see where everyone came from in the database. You can select everyone to see a bird's eye view of everyone from the project. Or you can narrow it down based on a specific type of event. For example, let's look at the participants in the Battle of Nashville. This will show us just where people are from who participated in the Battle of Nashville. You can also layer different types of events and people connected to them to see different types of searches. So let's say that we want to see where people are from who were incarcerated in the Tennessee State Penitentiary, and we wanted to see where people were from who worked on the Nashville and Northwestern Railroad. In the category labeled Browse the Map, you can choose the name of a place to see where it is located and get a list of connected people. You can navigate around the map by holding down your left mouse button and dragging. You can zoom in and out by scrolling your mouse wheel up and down, or you can use the features on the upper left corner of the map. You can also choose how you would like to view the map. If you would like to see labels of different counties and cities that are represented in the database, you can select to show labels. If you want to see the map without labels, you can toggle that option off. It is also helpful to zoom out of the map to get a big picture idea of these locations. Thank you for watching this quick guide for exploring the database and the various types of searches that you can do. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or feedback. Click on the Contact Us tab on the website and fill out this form and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much again for exploring this database and learning more about this valuable history.